Hello everyone, I am Rohit from Talent Battle and I welcome you all for this informative video series for NPTQ developed by Talent Battle. This video series will be helpful for you to get all the updates about NPTQ and we will be posting all NPTQ related learning videos on our YouTube channel so that it will be easy for you to get all the related material and it will be like one stop solution. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for off campus updates and make your career path easy with Talent Battle. Also do join our WhatsApp and Telegram groups. I have added the link in the description section. In this particular video about DBMS and SQL assessment questions, they have mainly focused on the table properties, data types, foreign key, primary key, candidate key, DCL, DDL, DML commands, and the join concepts. The difficulty level of these questions is moderate. So we'll start with the questions. The first question is in front of you. The below table holds the result of an assessment of three students. Whereas, if you see the table structure, student ID is mentioned and marks are mentioned. And the requirement is given to three developers, that is Tom, Dick and Harry, to generate a report as follows. So if you see the report, the mark section for 1002 student ID is fell. And if a student has scored than less than 50, so this will be our condition that a marks less than 50, the status should be shown as fell. Now see the queries what developers have written. The first query by Tom is like select student ID case when marks less than 50 then fail. Means uh, the condition is properly written as well as the result else to care. So this is the data type that they are focusing because we have to write down the character value and as status from assessment. What Dick has written is student ID case when marks less than 50 then fail else marks and as status from assessment. So in the case of Dick, they haven't mentioned about the data type. So this query will not work properly. Whereas Harry has mentioned that when marks are greater than 50, so the condition is wrong. So this condition, uh, this query about uh, from Harry is also not acceptable. So if you see which one of them will get the desired output. So the query written by the Tom is correct and you will have the output uh, perfect according to the query written by Tom. So the answer for this question is C. So you have to focus on the data types mentioned in the respective query. In the next question, considering the following code written for creating the table. So they have provided a table creation query over here that we have account number with integer data type, account name with var cap, size 30, which is not null, which should not be null, and the balance. The table is not getting created, identify the reason. So you have to identify the reason why the table is not being getting created. So the first option is balance must not be not null. Second is account number must be not null. Third one is primary key is missing for account and fourth one is balance must have a data type. So if you go with the basic part uh, that is data type mentioned for all the parameters of the table that we have considered. So if you see account number is having a data type that is integer. Account name is also having a data type that is varchar. But balance is not having the data type. So that's why if you check all the options D is the correct option because balance must have a data type to execute this query properly. The next question uh, represents the information about table course and student which have one to n relationship, right? So this is the important uh, phrase that I have been mentioned. So the relationship mentioned is like one to n respectively means one course can be opted by n number of students. Okay. And CID is the primary key of course table. So this one is acting as a primary key for this table course and SID is acting as a primary key for student table. Now the question is to which table the foreign key should be added. Now when I say one has to end relationship, the foreign key should, should be added on this particular side. So if you take the uh, options that they have been provided, either student or course. So one course can be given to multiple students. So this will not work. In one has to end relationship, foreign key cannot be established. So this is also not true. So this will not also work. Only student, whereas if I see SID, then only student can have this and only course is not possible because of one has to end relationship. So my correct answer for this particular question is C. So my one only student can have the foreign key to be added. In the next question, they have uh, mentioned a table employee where the parameters are like employee ID number, which is also acting as a primary key, employee name with the data type var care and Kevin number with the data type number and the it is a unique one. So we have a unique value in cabin number, employee ID which is acting as a primary key, 
and the employee name table. So currently table is having some this particular data say 1001 Hari, 1002 Varun, 1003 Sham and the KB number is uniquely provided. So Rajesh created a table employee in order to record employee details. So we have to record the employee details in respect to, to this table. The question is select the right option for inserting a new row into the table. So what can be the right option in this case? If you check the first option, insert into employee values 1004. So 1004 can be added. Lali, the name can also be added. But if you see this cabin number 7 and 9, so it is already present over here. So and it is uniquely mentioned. So this query will not work. Insert into employee values 1004, Lali and Null. So this will work because 1004 is not present in the table in the employee ID column. So we can add this because it is a primary key. Lali employee name is also not present. We can add that as well and null value for the unique number of cabin that can be added. If you check the option C and D, in the option C, uh, employee ID is mentioned as null, as if it is a primary key, so you cannot mention employee ID as null, so this will not also work. And 1003 in the query D is already present over there, so this will not also work. So that's why for this particular question, uh, option B is the correct answer, which will satisfy all the given requirements in the question. Moving to next, a table employee has the following data, employee number, employee name, department and salary. The following queries were executed on the table successfully and we have to select count star from employee. So what are the queries? Update employee set department equals to HR where department is marketing. Right now in the provided table, there are two values with the department marketing. So if this query is executed successfully as mentioned, this marketing will be replaced with HR. So after having a successful uh, execution of this query, we will be having four records which will have the department as HR. After that, delete from employee where department is HR and salary is 1000. So now out of these four records, say starting from 2111 to end, that is 3222. So we are now focusing on this much area only where my department is HR and salary is 1000 so we have to delete these records so we have two records one is this of employee name gary and second one is employee name raj who is having salary 1000 now out of four these two records will get deleted after successful execution of this query and now they are asking what will be the output of the following query select count start from employee so out of all these tables there were total six records and out of that six two are deleted because of these two queries after updation and deletion so remaining count will be 4. So this option C is my correct answer. Okay, so I hope you are getting this. Moving to the next question, consider the following statements with respect to a candidate key, right? So they are now asking the informative inform about candidate key. So first one is candidate key identifies rows in a relation uniquely. Yes, this is true in case of candidate key. There can be only one candidate key in a relation. No, it cannot be because one candidate key in a relation is not the case. You can have multiple candidate key with, the, with reference to the relations. And a candidate key can be a combination of more than one attribute in a relation. This is also true because in case of relation, if there are more than one attributes, we can apply the candidate key separately to them. So if you go with the options checking A and C, we have to identify the statements which are true. So A and C are my true. B is already false. So this option is not there. So definitely option A is the correct answer in case of this question regarding to the candidate. In the next question, they have provided the table salesperson with two attribute values. One is ID and second one is amount. Now what they are expecting, they select distinct ID, amount, ID and amount from salesperson order by amount ASC. So this stands for ascending order. So what they are expecting that we have to decide the ascending order of this uh, respective elements or respective uh, queries whatever has been provided to this and based on the output of the above query identify the correct statement so whatever the records will be generated after performing the uh, option of ascending we have to check whether 1005 will be the third record or 1009 will be the fourth record 1002 will be first record or 1001 will be fourth record now when i execute this query and focusing on the ascending case if you see the amount 
my 460 will be the uh, record that will be coming first after that i will be having 600 then i will be having 1800 and then i will be having 2400 considering the ids as well so this will be my sequence in ascending order now 1005 will be the third record so third record is related to the 1800 and it matches with the id as well so that's why option a is the correct option for this particular question in the next example employee id in the column name the data type is provided as integer and the constant is a primary key so this is important that we need to focus on it the considering the following employee table and the code which is given so they have provided some records as well in the second table you can see here employee id 1 2 3 name ram sham and rahul and the salary is mentioned over here whereas the structure of the table like name is having var care data type salary is having number and my employee id is a primary key now when this uh, provided code is uh, executed and the question is like what will happen when the above gets, code gets executed in the first case update employee set salary 5000 where employee id is 1 so when my employee id is 1 i will change the salary to 5000 so this update is successful after that i will update the employee set name dravid salary 5000 where my employee id is 3 now already the name rahul is given so it will be updated to dravid and the salary is 2000 which is updated to 5000 so these two updates will be successful after that next query is insert into employee values so we have to insert these values 3 yuraj in the name column and 2500 in the salary but if you check the first column value 3 and my employee is already a primary key and we already have the record of 3 so this is not possible because it is a primary key uh, constraint provided to the employee ID column so only first two updates can be successfully executed and third insert operation will not work so according to the question what will happen when the above codes get executed both the updates will be successful this will be my correct option as far as the execution of the queries is concerned moving to the next question in this they have provided the tables vehicle type and vehicle given below so this question is related to the join query so we have to work on the concept of join over here now when vehicle type is provided vid and vtype are the two parameters whereas in the vehicle id vid brand model and price so vid is the common factor out of these two tables with id being the primary key and vid is the foreign key so they have specifically mentioned that id from the vehicle type will act as a primary key and vid will act as a foreign key for the second time so considering these two uh, constraints that have been provided the query is like select brand from vehicle v join vehicle type vt so we have to perform the join operation on v and vt focusing on the selection of brand so when this will be executed with the join operation and grouping by brand is done whereas the condition provided is having count of v type is greater than one so we have to check these two three cases first grouping by brand should be done the count of v type greater than one should be there and the join operation between vehicle v and vehicle type vt where my id will act as a primary key from vehicle type and from vehicle vid will act as a foreign key so if i check an equivalent sub query we have to choose that would achieve the functionality performed by the above join query same query that we have to choose out of this four and the only difference between the options will be the where clause so if i check all the queries Say for example, first A option, select brand from vehicle where VID in select VID from vehicle type having count V type greater than 1. So this will not work. The reason behind it is uh, we have to check the join functionality between vehicle V and vehicle type VT. If you focus on the this case of uh, uh, option B, they are dealing with the vehicle type and grouping by with having count, right? So brand is not mentioned over here. So this will not also work. Now, if I check with the case of uh, third option, select brand from vehicle where VID in select VID from vehicle type is there. Again, the brand is not mentioned over here. And if you go with the last option, that select brand from vehicle where VID in select VID from vehicle type. So, this is my first case that is satisfactory. 
grouping by right so this group by is more important because it has been mentioned over here group by brand so for this case of having part and for this case of uh, having count these two will be uh, declined as far as the given query is concerned focusing on the b and c we have to also check the case of v type greater than 1 and vd vid greater than 1 now having count vid greater than 1 because we are working on the vid and the v type so according to the uh, provided satisfactory queries and the constraints that they have been provided option d is the correct option that is most suitable for the case of this particular question so you write the tables uh, separately with the given parameters and then you will perform the join query so you will get the results like this in the next question considering the tables employee and department given below so two tables are provided one is employee and second one is department in the first table employee number is a primary key and department number is a foreign key and in the second table department number is a primary key now which of the following queries will be executed successfully so if you check one by one in both the tables applicable insert into employee we are dealing with the first table where values like 1006 name is frederick 10 is my department number and 2000 is my salary. So in the employee enable, uh, A can be executed successfully. The reason is it satisfies with the structure of the table where 1006 is not available and it is a primary key. So we can add it. Name Frederick can be added. 10 and 2000 can be done. Now it deals with the foreign key. So multiple values are allowed here. So option A will work. If you check option B, insert into employee values 1008. Again, in the employee 1008 can be added because uh, it is a primary key and 1008 record is not available. Name Frederick can be allowed. Candidate key can be, uh, sorry, foreign key can be null. So that is also acceptable and the salary part is 3000. So this query will also give us the positive results. So A and B will work. Insert into department. Now talking about the department table. Department number, which is a primary key with values 40. So 40 is already present over here and it is a primary key. So this will not work in case of uh, option C and last option insert into department values null HR right so the first is department number where department number is a primary key which cannot be null so option D is not acceptable so for this question multiple options are the solutions so the solution for this is option A and B both will work and give us the positive results so I hope you understand all the questions and the explanation related to the answers uh, don't forget to subscribe the channel for more such videos. Thank you.